What's going on everyone? Today we are going to be talking about fly fishing. Uh, I'm going to have two videos out, this one and another one, for a fly fishing for beginners um, series that I'm going to do. So it's working into the time of year, it's a winter, um, and personally I think this is the best time to fly fish. I love fly fishing in the winter, um, had most success fly fishing in the winter. Um, I mainly fly fish, for, fly fish for trout, but I do a little bit of everything. I've got bass tie or flies, I've got crappie flies, panfish, any panfish flies, and I can pretty much panfish for trout or bass or any panfish. So with that being said, today we are going to be going over some necessities to have if you're wanting to start fly fishing. These, I'm going to show you everything that I would recommend having right off the bat when you're getting into fly fishing. Um, and I'm going to show you some things that are nice to have, but you don't really need them until you get into it more and decide you really like it. So let's hop into all the things you need to fly fish. So getting started, first off, you have to have a fly fishing rod. I mean, that's, that's a given. You guys already know, but you don't have to have the most expensive fly fishing rod. Um, I've got this one, which is a great beginner rod for me. It's actually a really good rod anyways. It's the Orvis Clearwater Rod. Um, I got this down at the Orvis shop in Sevierville, Tennessee when we were down there, and it's been an amazing rod. This is a nine foot five weight. Um, I would highly recommend if you're just wanting to get a versatile rod that you can pretty much uh, do everything rod um, getting a five weight. So it's personally, I think it's just good for everything. It's the one I've got. I had a four weight. That's why I got a five weight in this one. But then I sold my four weight because I didn't use it enough since I'm, when I'm trout fishing, I'm throwing like um, woolly boogers or streamers or stuff like that, which are bigger flies. And you really, they're not, they weren't as good on a um, five weight or a four weight as what they were on a five. So a good starting rod is a five weight rod. Um, I would recommend a nine foot, eight, eight and a half to nine foot. Um, I like these four piece rods right here because they have the nice travel cases that as you can see, it's about two foot long, two and a half foot long. So need a rod, recommend a five weight rod and about a nine foot. To go with that rod, you are going to need a reel. In here, I've got the Orvis Hydros. Um, they all, I believe all Orvis reels come with a, this nice casing for it and it's got like tools and stuff to assemble it most of the time in it. I've got the tools in here. But this is Hydros and it is for, I believe it's like a four to, four to six weight reel. Um, they've got a little bit funky uh, specs on them to where they're good for any line in between like four weight and six weight or three weight and five weight. Um, I think this is a four to six. But on your reel, if you go to buy one somewhere, um, I believe most outdoor places have or will do spooling and stuff for you, but you're going to need backing, you're going to need fly line, and then you are also going to need some leader and tippet, which I'll go over here in a minute. So you're going to need a reel and all the line to go on it. So with that being said, there's really nothing special about the reels that you need. Um, the only thing with the reel that you need to do is whatever weight line you're planning on throwing or whatever weight rod you got, um, make sure you got a reel that matches it. So like five weight rod, this is a four to six weight reel. So I've got a five weight, I put five weight uh, fly line on it and then yeah. So got to match up all your weights on your reel to your rod and your line. So there's that. Don't need to get anything special for a fly reel. Um, I got this because it's a sealed one that if I happen to do saltwater fishing too with it, I can use that reel for it. So let's move on to a little bit about the tippet and backing and whatnot for this. So when you're looking into backing and tippet and fly line and all that, most of the time, wherever you get your reel, um, I got mine at Orvis, they put backing on it for you. So as you can see the blue line on here, that is my backing on there that Orvis put on. From there, I did buy some line that Orvis had. It's just cheaper line. Um, it is slow sinking, I believe. Though so you can get floating, slow sinking or fast sinking line, I believe. Um, and I don't fish top water flies that much or dry flies as what they call them that much. So I don't necessarily care for having a floating line. So with this line on here, um, I just matched it up with the type of flies I'm going to be throwing. So since I'm going to be throwing flies that I want to get down on the bottom of a lake or river or pond, whatever I'm fishing in, um, that's why I got slow sinking. 
because I don't want it to be completely sinking in case I do throw dry flies, but I want something that is still gonna work for the beaded flies like I throw most of the time. So with that, that's why I've got slow sinking on there. From there, you can get all types of tippet and the leader line that you want. Um, I'll pull out my leader for example. This is what I use most of the time. This is 4X Powerflex Trout um, Tapered Leader. Um, I like these. This is the Rio brand. I like this and I throw it most of the time. It's a nine foot leader. You really don't need something that long. You really only need about, I would say four foot, five foot of leader. But I just get the longer one since this is tapered. So sometimes if I don't, like if I put a fresh tippet on there, fresh leader on there, um, I don't need to put tippet on it um, at the end because it's already tapered down to it. So that's what I do most of the time. And then as I fish and as I do more ties and I cut back that leader so it's back about four foot, five foot, um, I'll start putting my own tippet on it. And I'll show you that here in a second. But right there, if you guys are just wanting to get started, get a rod, the reel, fly line, and then get this leader. Um, be just because it's tapered and you don't have to worry about tape or for tip it yet. So that's what I would recommend right there. This is 4X and it's equivalent to like 6.4 pounds. If you don't want to worry about getting tip it and leader, another thing you guys can do is look up on YouTube different knots to tie for fly fishing, fly, tying tip it to leader, and you can do that same type of deal by putting like 10 pound bass line, like three foot of 10 pound uh, fluorocarbon line and tying a knot to like four pound um, fluorocarbon or six pound fluorocarbon. Um, if I'm out of tippet or leader, that's what I do a lot of the time because I've got plenty of 10 and like four or five pound uh, line um, in my boat or in my house or in storage or whatnot. So that's another little tip that you guys can do if you don't wanna worry about buying this leader, but leader like this, it's like seven bucks for three of them. So that's gonna last you quite a bit of time. I've had this now for two years and I haven't went through them. So that kind of shows how much you go through them with that. So I know I kind of just ran through that really quick. I'm trying to run through it quick just so I don't drag on and throw too much information at you guys or bore you guys. So when I talk about Tippet, this is Tippet right here. I use Rio Powerflex. It's the same thing as this. That's why I use it. Um, all the different tippets latch together, and I've got a 5x tippet, 4x tippet, and 3x tippet. As you guys can see, 3x is equal to 8.2 pounds, um, 4x is equal to 6.4 pounds, and 5x is equal to 5 pounds. Um, it's really just the way that fly fishing categorizes different weight lines. Like if you're bass fishing and you will say, oh, I'm going to throw a Texas rig on 17 pound line. With this, um, it's pretty much the same thing. This bigger number X, so like 6X, I think is the highest you can get for a tippet. 6X is gonna be like four pounds. And then as you get lower um, size tippet, so if you get down to like 1X tippet, it's gonna be like 12, 13 pounds. So 5X is five pounds, 4X, six pounds, 3X, eight pounds. So the higher number X number for tippet, the lighter line, the lower number X for tippet, the heavier line. Um, it's a little bit confusing. I got it confused all the time when I first started, but after uh, getting used to it, it's not that bad to memorize. So Rio Tippet, it's fairly cheap for tippet and it works really well, but if you use tapered leaders like this or if you use the just regular fluorocarbon line, you really don't have to worry about this much. So that's basically everything you need to set up your fly rod and get it ready to tie on a fly and go fishing. Other than that, the only other thing you need to get really uh, to be able to fly fish is flies. And right here, I'll show you guys a little bit about what kind of flies I would recommend for getting off fly fishing. If you're gonna be fly fishing for trout, any type of river fishing, um, I recommend these flies right here. These are beaded woolly boogers, as you guys can see on the tip or on the head of it. There's a like copper bead on it. Um, these work really good in rivers, streams, 
any type of trout or panfish in that area, they work good. Anything that's going to eat a bug, they'll work good. Um, the woolly boogers, as you guys can see, I've got quite a few there, and I've got some more on the other side too. The woolly boogers are all these ones on the bottom half to where they've got a bead, they've got kind of a skinny body, and then a big flared up tail coming off of it. That's considered a woolly booger. Um, there's all there's a bunch of different names for different ones. So like this one, it's pretty much a woolly booger with a little bit of flared out stuff or flared out feathers around the head of it. There's a specific name for stuff like that, but personally I just call them woolly boogers. It's how I keep it pretty much all uh, organized and it's just my way of doing it. Other than getting woolly boogers like that, if you guys can see up here on the very top row, there's these little beaded uh, nymphs. And basically what those are is they're just, they're tiny little flies, but it's just a little bead and then a few feathers on them. And uh, basically it's, you can either use it as a trailer hook for those um, woolly boogers. You can use tie a woolly booger, leave extra line, and then down the line farther, you tie one of these. You can do one of those. I forget. I think it's like a European um, European fly fishing or whatever. It's, it's something weird. I don't do that often. So basically, if I'm going to be fishing for panfish in a creek or if I'm going to be fishing in a river for um, certain types of trout, like smaller trout, that's what I'm going to be using is those little um, nymphs. And as you guys can see, they're up on the top. Right below them are all my dry flies, but I would not recommend getting into those starting off. I would just get something like these nymphs on the top row or these woolly boogers down here. So I'm not going to go into much sizing for it. Um, most of the time, my, the size of my flies, if you guys want to know, probably about an inch, inch and a half for the total length of the fly. Woolly boogers don't get too big if you're looking at trout ones. So anything there, you guys can kind of see the size of my hand compared to them. So those are basically the only flies I would recommend starting with if you're going to be fly fishing for trout or in creeks or rivers. Now, the little nymphs up here at the top that I just showed you guys, those are also good for panfish in like ponds or even lakes if you want. Um, they, were, they were good for panfish just because they're small and it looks like a little grub to them. And you can get different ones that look like different bugs. Like I've got one that looks like a bee, one that looks like flies. And you can pretty much get basically all you want. So, so if you're wanting to get into bass fishing for, or like fly fishing for bass instead of uh, necessarily trout fishing with flies, um, I would get something more of a line of streamers, which they're, that's kind of a woolly booger, kind of a streamer right there. I forget the exact name, but here's more of a streamer. Um, it's kind of got a little bit more of a tail on it, a little bit longer uh, feathers on it. And it's kind of, to me, it kind of looks like a jig if you're bass fishing. Other than that, you can use, I believe these are scroungers right here. It's pretty much like a little uh, barbell looking or dumbbell looking weight on the front with eyes and you got the long feathers off the back. Those work really well for bass. I've thrown these for bass. It's a little bit heavier and it works good for bass. Um, for bass, Use whatever colors you want. I would probably recommend staying with natural colors. Like when I'm when I'm bass fishing, I throw a lot of white and chartreuse like this. I'll throw black and blue, and then I'll also throw like dark colors, anything that's kind of natural. So those are what I'm throwing for bass if I'm fly fishing for bass. Other than that, the only other thing I would say you guys really need when bass fishing or when fly fishing, getting started off, is a pair of forceps. They're really handy when you're out there fly fishing. You don't necessarily need them. You could use pliers if you really want. Forceps are nice because they lock at the base and you can't pull them apart. So you can grab a fly right around the hook with them and then you can tie on the fly with your fly line since your fly line is relatively thin and some of these flies can be relatively small too. So I would recommend getting forceps it's not a necessity, but I would definitely recommend it. It makes your life so much easier. And then also getting a pair of these little clippers. It's basically like fingernail clippers or toenail clippers, but 
just because it's technically fly fishing, it's probably overpriced compared to what normal toenail clippers are. So you can even just get a regular pair of toenail clippers. The only thing different about this is there's like a little pin in the very end. So before you tie on a fly, if there happens to be paint over the uh, eyelet where you tie onto the fly, you can put it right up against this little pin and then punch out the paint or the whatever plastic or whatever's in that little eyelet hole. So that's what makes this nice. But you definitely need something like this. I would definitely say get one of these. Forceps are nice to have, but they're not really, like you don't really need them. Um, sometimes these flies can get really stuck in fish mouth when you uh, hook them. So it's nice to be able to get them out, but you can use pliers for it too if you really want to. Other than that, there's nothing else that you really need when you're going fly fishing. Um, if you're going to be wading rivers, of course you're going to want waders, some type of waders. Um, now that I'm getting into it more, I've got neoprene or whatever they're neoprene waders, um, just like the little plastic layered ones are not warm at all. And I would recommend getting some type of thermal ones or insulated ones. If you guys are going to be fly fishing in a river and waiting, if you guys are going to go from banks, you guys don't need anything else. One other thing that's nice after I got it is something like this. This is an Orvis pack. Um, it's an Orvis sling right here. It's got your little strap for your uh, forceps in the front. You've got a water bottle holder in the bottom, and then you can hold everything in here. I put my flies in here, I put my reel in here, I put all my leader and tippet in here, and uh, I can fit pretty much everything I need in here. Also, you can hook on a net to it, and it's really nice to have in case you're wading a creek and you need to lick a little net because you really can't force up fish like you do when you're conventional fishing because of how thin this line is. That's one other thing that I forgot to mention is if you guys are wading creeks, I would recommend a net, but if you don't want to do that, I learned a little trick down at Orvis, take your hat and if you get a little fish in, just use your hat, scoop it up and they said it's actually better on the fish than using a net. I don't know how true that is or not, that's just what I was told. So. One other thing I would recommend, they're fairly cheap. You can get them for like 20 bucks for like the rubberized nets. Um, I know some people say don't use rubber ones. Some people say use them. Use whatever you guys want starting off. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, you guys will learn along the way if you get more into it. So, anyways, that is basically the gist of everything that I would recommend or uh, say that you guys should have to start off fly fishing need your rod, preferably probably around a 4 or 5 weight to get started. You need your reel, then you need your backing, your fly line, and then your leader and tippet for it. And then just some flies. That's really the only thing you need to get started into it. Don't overcomplicate it getting started. Watch plenty of YouTube videos on how to cast it um, and stuff like that. And if you can, find someone local that has been fly fishing before or knows how to and can teach you. That's really the best way to do anything. Um, fishing, hunting, everything. I would find someone local that's been doing it and can teach you all the tips and tricks that they've learned. It helps out tremendously. So, anyways, I will probably be making a video over my exact setup I've got, everything I keep in my bag, and everything I bring with me when out fly fishing. But for now, thank you guys for watching and let me know if you guys want me to do any other fly fishing uh, videos. So, thank you guys for watching again, and we will see you guys in the next video.